everyone. This is the last segment that I'll be doing for the Writing 300 class um, with Professor Susan Beam. So just in this last um, video, we're, I'm going to be talking about how to access some popular sources. So those would be things you'd find through Google, through other websites, and also including newspapers, which are popular sources. But as we can see, we can actually use the library in order to access those. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. So as you can see here, um, I'm actually just on Google. And, you know, I'm not going to insult anybody and say that we don't understand how to use Google. I'm sure everyone uses Google. But there might be a few features that I just want to, you know, try out that, you know, some folks might not, you know, under or they might not know that they're there. So I'm kind of using my search term that I've been using in our library databases, and I've just typed out community garden. And then, you know, if we kind of start looking through some of these websites, we can see the first hit is going to be from the Baltimore City Rec um, Department of Recreation and Parks. So again, if we click through here, there, start seeing some things that might be really helpful. If we scroll down, we kind of start seeing some um, locations around the city, which Again, if we start clicking through, maybe they have their own websites, we can find information there. You know, Google has, you know, through its algorithm, it's very smart. Um, it has some other, you know, suggested questions that folks might be asking or that you might be wanting to ask. So even down here, what is a community garden versus a collective garden? And as we continue, you know, kind of going down through here, we can see, you know, other organizations. So maybe this Baltimore Free Farm might be a really great place to go to get some information about initiatives around the city that are already happening. And then if we kind of go back up to the top, we can see, you know, different options. So we kind of go into all filters. Um, we can see, you know, some other ones around here. Um, you can actually kind of filter out if you're looking for, you know, maybe newspapers, things like that. You can go into there and sometimes it does pop up on this bar. Not always, as we can see. But if we go into this all filters button, click down into news. And it will just show us um, articles that are coming from, you know, news publications. So we kind of just taking a quick look. I'm really not seeing anything local. So maybe I wanna adjust my search and just type in community garden Baltimore. All right, so then now we can actually see that, you know, there's an article right here from the Baltimore Sun, the Baltimore Banner, Baltimore Fishbowl. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but these do look like much more, you know, local publications. That is just kind of one way to go through and search for information and filter information using Google which I know is a very familiar search tool for a lot of folks. And another, you know, really helpful website that I want to share with you all, and I will be sharing this in your Canvas site as well. That's going to be this website called the Baltimore Neighborhood Indicators Alliance. So I know a lot of folks are kind of working on research and projects about, you know, thinking from the mindset of being a local change agent. So if we're thinking really locally, you know, maybe you want some information about Baltimore City, about a specific neighborhood in the city. So we can actually go in here if it kind of defaults to Baltimore City more widely. But if I want to go in and maybe click on Fells Point, can click on the data. And it will give you a lot of different categories. You can go through and kind of check out some information about that neighborhood. And then if we want to go back, if we want to do search, you know, more widely in Baltimore City, we can always do that. And then as we can see, there's just a ton of different categories. If we even open up just one, sustainability, there's a lot of different things that they've been measuring in the city. And that can be, you know, really helpful as you're going through learning more about Baltimore City, specific neighborhoods, specific issues in the city. And then just, you know, the last thing I want to share, you know, I'm not going to dive too deeply into Google, um, but, you know, we do like to think of Google as being the best, like most free, accessible search tool, which can be very true for a lot of folks. Um, you know, not everybody is affiliated with a university like Uvalde and has, you know, access to a lot of information through our databases. Um, but not everything on Google is 
free and accessible. So one of those things is going to be from a lot of these publications. So if I try, you know, clicking into this Baltimore Sun article, Yep, we're going to see just at the top, this is a subscriber only article. So if I try to scroll down, it might be letting me read this for now. Nope, not anymore. So yep, so it's very, very quickly trying to get me to pay for a subscription and it is blocking me from reading this article. So that can be really unfortunate because, you know, a lot of newspapers, especially local newspapers, when we're looking at local issues, can be really difficult and frustrating because they can be so informative and helpful for us. But if we're not subscribing to them ourselves, we can't get into that information. But as then, um, again, as UVault students, along with all those databases, so including the, the Academic Search Ultimate, that Gale Opposing Viewpoints databases that we looked at in the previous recording, we do subscribe to a number of newspapers through the library. So if we go back to the library's homepage and then get back into the list of databases. So unfortunately, there's no way to filter and just find newspapers. I'm not quite sure why it doesn't do that. But a few you know, important ones that we do subscribe to, if we even click into the B, we can see that we do subscribe to the Baltimore Banner, the Baltimore Sun, you can get historical newspapers from the Baltimore Sun. So if you're going to do some maybe comparative research, you could always look into that. We also subscribe to the Baltimore Business Journal. And we also subscribe to, you know, other national newspapers. So maybe if I'm looking at the issue of food scarcity, lack of healthy food in the city, and I'm looking at community gardens as a potential, you know, solution or way to ease that issue. Maybe I'm wanting to look locally, but maybe I also want to look in other newspapers or more nationally to see if there's other things that I could compare to or borrow information from to learn more about that about that you know potential project. So we do also subscribe to other national newspapers, really big the big ones kind of um, we subscribe to the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal. So. Going through and exploring those can always be very helpful in, you know, finding all the information that you can. And some of our newspapers, just because they are a little bit different, sometimes you can go through and kind of access the search and it'll look similar to a database. But you can also, for some of them, have the option of creating your own account. And so you can just go straight to the website and, you know, be able to log you in. So I'll just use that as an example. So if you want to look at the Baltimore, the Baltimore Banner, um, so the Baltimore Banner is a newer subscription for us. We've just started the subscription this semester, the spring 2024 semester. And as you can see in this description down here, it'll tell you what to find here. And it'll also tell you how to create an account in order to access the data, in order to access you know, their information. So I've actually gone ahead and set up my own account. So here I am in the Baltimore banner. So I'm all ready to go. I have full access as if I was, you know, paying for this as an individual. So if we, you know, go into the search and start um, searching for community garden, it's showing that we've had 200 results. And even similarly to some of our databases, there's other ways to filter. So because it is a newspaper, and they are, you know, really relying on very timely, recent, current events. You can filter much shorter time spans, so you can even filter out things that have been published in the past week, which is really great. And you can also kind of go here by category again. It's kind of giving you some options of, you know, things that it thinks could be related to community gardens. I'm not sure if some of these are, you know, quite as related as we might think, but you know, this um, these websites for these newspapers can also be a really helpful place. And while popular sources, the things that we find from a newspaper or a even a government site or an organization like this, or things through Google, they might not be considered scholarly or academic sources, but 
we can still kind of dig through and find a lot of information that is extremely credible and reliable. And obviously, you know, I don't have to preach. You cannot trust everything on the internet. Some things are more trustworthy than others, but kind of diving a little bit deeper, using some of those search skills that I talked about in that first lecture can really help you filter through a lot of the information that you find through Google and other popular sources. So I hope um, this has been helpful. These videos have been helpful. And I just want to reiterate one more time that, you know, I am an embedded librarian for this writing class this semester. So I will be around if you ever have any questions or want to schedule a kind of one-on-one -on -one consultation. My contact information is on the Canvas site. And like these videos, that will be staying there for the remainder of the semester. So you can always log in, send me an email if you have a question, or go into my booking calendar and set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me. Those are going to be in the Start Here module on the Meet Your Librarian page. I hope everybody has a good one, and I will hopefully see you around Canvas. Bye, everybody.